Welcome to the Sincerely God Podcast. I'm Sarah, and I believe that God is speaking to all of us all the time and in many different ways. The primary way that I listen is through two-way journaling. And on this podcast, I share excerpts from my journaling time with God, which are really inspirational messages spoken from the perspective of God to you. I'll talk more about what two-way journaling is and explore other methods, which may be helpful for you to listen to God in your own unique way. I'm just an ordinary person who gets to hear from an extraordinary God. And I believe you can too. Thanks for joining. Hi everyone. So the journaling excerpt that I'm gonna share today is talking a little bit about fear and those kind of anxious thoughts that can take over. I, for one, struggle with this quite a bit and it's been a process. I think there's been a lot of practical things God has shared with me, but I wanted to share this with you in case you find it helpful for any fearful thoughts or just anxiety type thoughts that you may have. So he says, good morning, my child. I'm happy to meet with you this morning. I long to meet with you in the early of the day before your day and its busyness begins. I desire to share my thoughts and plans with you each morning. Great are my plans for you, my child. Every day has been carefully prepared. I have set aside special moments throughout every day for you to encounter my goodness. Receive them as they come. Receive them with open heart and hands. See all I am doing. See all I have prepared for you. I've been making preparations for a long time, my child. Receive with joy and gladness all that is ready for you to partake. Do not worry about what tomorrow brings. Receive what I have prepared for today. Receive and be glad. Receive and be joyful. Share my joy and gladness with all you meet. Do not hold back. Do not be afraid to live with joy in your heart and love on your lips. This way is better. My way is better, my child. Receive all I am giving you. Receive freely and fully. Receive constantly and in full measure. Receive my love in all its power. Receive and share. These gifts I have given you, this love you have received, share it. Share it well with others. This is my will for you. I desire you to share what I have given you. Do not hide or hold it in. Share freely with all who cross your path. Stop doubting, my child. Let go of your fear. You create ideas in your mind that will never come to be. You fear outcomes that make no sense. Keep your fearful thoughts in check. Test them against reason and then test them against my will and power. You will find that every fear falls away and cannot stand against my reality, the reality of who I am and who you are in me. Yes, my child, receive this truth for today. I am with you and I am for you. No matter what comes against you, you will prosper in my name. Be strong and courageous. Do not back down. Do not hold back. Share my love and power and boldness. Ask in my name. Give in my name. Receive this power afresh every day. Receive all my gifts and operate in them. Receive and believe and stand firm in your faith. Walk confidently with me along this path I have prepared. I am with you. You have nothing to fear. So I love how he starts just by saying like, I have these great plans for you. And every day has been carefully prepared. And I've, I've set these like special moments for you throughout your day. Like to start with this expectation of, goodness and joy and not this expectation of worry or what is going to go wrong today. He says, do not worry about what tomorrow brings. Receive what I have prepared for today. And I think that's another key piece. I think we we hear it a lot, right? Like be in the present moment. You know, there's that, that Bible verse that talks about just to focus on today that tomorrow, you know, has today has enough worry of its own. Don't focus on tomorrow's worries. And just that reminder of, of being present and and then, of course, this part where he says, you create ideas in your mind that will never come to be. You fear outcomes that make no sense. Keep your fearful thoughts in check. This, I mean, obviously, this is from journaling that God was speaking to me because this is something that I struggle with a lot. And I, I mean, certainly in the past and even today, I think I'm learning some practical ways to do better at that. But you know, I'm, I'm a planner. I have a natural tendency to be 10 steps ahead in my thoughts. And there's good in that, but that can also get out of control. And oftentimes those thoughts are turning to worries and in a way anxiety. And, and some of those constant running kind of pre-planning thoughts are really just a form of anxiety. And 
maybe you can relate. And so I guess today's episode will be probably more for my fellow kind of anxious thinkers. He says, keep your fearful thoughts in check. I, and there's, I know there's another verse in the Bible that talks about taking every thought captive. So for me, a big part of being able to do this or attempt to do this is to first recognize that my thoughts are not me, that just because it seems like it's coming from within, right? The thoughts exist within my own mind. It doesn't mean that's who I am. You can have feelings that come and go. You can have thoughts that come and go, but that isn't actually who you are. If you walk through a public place, you're going to walk through different sounds. You're going to walk through different, maybe smells. You're going to see different things that they're going to come in and out of your vision. Thoughts and feelings can be like that as well, that we can be around other environments and have thoughts come in that are not actually ourselves. They're not really part of us. They're just something that we're witnessing. And so if we can recognize that, that if I have a thought, it does not mean that it is mine. I can choose whether to hold on to it or not, whether to allow it to just kind of quickly pass through, choose to reject it outright, or to to hold on to it, right? And so if you realize that every thought allows you a decision to decide what to do with that thought, then it gives you more power. It it allows you to, to do this step of keeping your fearful thoughts in check. So if you have thoughts that are coming in that are really a form of fear or worry, you're saying, what about this? What about that? And this can go wrong and that can go wrong you can choose to reject those thoughts. You know, he's telling me, you create ideas in your own mind that will never come to be. How many times have you done that? I have done this so many times, right? I'm creating these scenarios in my mind of if this person does that, or if if this problem goes this way, What so many different ways that we can kind of create these potential outcomes that never will actually come to be. They only exist in our mind. The problem with that, the the negative impact of that is just because it hasn't happened, it's still actually having a negative impact on you by being something that you're believing you're, you're, you're keeping in your mind. I think I've shared in a prior episode, or maybe it's on my, my e-course where I talk about how, you know, there's, there's scientific studies where musicians, athletes, they can practice a particular skill just through their imagination, like not even having to like be on the the field or the basketball court doing that thing. They can actually play it in their mind over and over again and actually see the improvement in that skill to the same degree as them actually doing it physically. I don't know if that applies to every single type of skill, but I know there are studies about that. And it's because our our imagination, our thoughts, our beliefs, and really the feelings that are associated even with those thoughts, they're real to us. Physiologically, they are real to us. I mean, you can think of a memory, think about a time maybe when you were scared or when you were really happy or joyful. Oftentimes when you really just take the time to, in a way, bring yourself back to that moment in time, often you, you'll you feel physical sensations, right? You'll feel joy, you'll feel happiness, or you'll feel sadness. You could even get tears, right? If you're remembering a sad memory, that's how closely connected our thoughts are. And, and so when we're creating these negative outcomes in our mind, we're actually creating something that's having a negative impact, something that hasn't even actually occurred and, and very likely will not ever occur but we are allowing the negative impacts to us today. So just this reminder that, you know, he says, keep your fearful thoughts in check, test them against reason, and then test them against my will and power. You will find that every fear falls away and cannot stand against my reality. So first apply reason, test them against reason. If you're honest with yourself, if I am honest with myself, a lot of the times those imagined outcomes, those what if scenarios, if I'm really realistic, the likelihood that they are going to happen is very low. So, so often I can just, and even if we're saying like, sometimes we'll have very negative views of ourselves. Maybe we're believing lies about ourselves. Like 
I am not enough, I am not beautiful, or whatever it may be, I'm not good at this thing. If you can actually take a step back, right? If you can be the, the friend that is speaking to you in that scenario, take a step back and you can actually apply logic and reality of, okay, of, I, I, it's not that I, I'm not enough. There's so much proof and evidence that I am enough, that I am good, that I am all these things, right? But then he says, then test them against my will and power. Well, any potential outcome that we could fear cannot stand against God's power. And, and yes, I acknowledge there are still negative things that happen in this world. And I don't understand why certain things happen and, you know, healing occurs sometimes and not other times, or I, I don't understand. There's so much mystery to this life that we live. But even if you consider that negative outcome, God is still with you in it. God can still provide in it. And often what we're fearing is our inability to, to survive it, right? Our inability to survive that, that negative outcome, that difficult possibility. But against God's power, you'll always survive it. You'll all, he'll bless you through it. And I know we don't like to go through difficult things. I do not like to go through difficult things, but I can absolutely look at my own life and see that there have been so many challenges, so many hard seasons, so many, honestly, just painful things, but I can see the blessing on the other side. I can see how God worked in those moments and really did did work in me that probably couldn't have been done if I hadn't been in that particular situation. So it's just an encouragement to first recognize that you can choose what thoughts you allow versus not, what thoughts you entertain versus not, which thought paths you, you travel. When you notice yourself starting to have those what ifs or those fearful thoughts, those anxious thoughts, try to take a step back. And, and recognize, you can even kind of picture, if it's helpful for you to imagine in this way, picture as if you have, I don't know, a basket, a bucket, whatever, um, some container that has all of these different thoughts in it, right? Any kind of metaphor you want to use, balls or whatever, just different things that are in this basket. You can choose to say like, I don't want any of these, these you know, red balls in there. I only want the blue ones. Or imagine if you're, you're struggling to stop these anxious thoughts from overtaking, imagine those anxious thoughts as a picture of something that you can physically pick up and throw in the trash or pick up and take outside of that basket, right? You have control over your mind. You have control of what you want to allow to, to fill it. And and I'll, you know, I'll back up a little bit. That also goes to what are you filling your mind with, right? What, what friends are you spending time with? What movies are you watching? What music are you listening to? How much news are you watching? All of that does deposit in our minds, in our, in our souls, really. And if you're finding that you're feeling really anxious all the time, or you're having a lot of worry thoughts about a particular um, subject, consider are you maybe filling yourself with these you know I, there's a lot of media outlets that are very negative just social media can be very negative right we get that algorithm that just keeps feeding us the same thing and it it has an impact so that's something to consider as well what is your basket being filled with you can change what you're, you're filling your basket with what you're filling your mind your heart your soul with but then you can also moment by moment make a conscious choice to say, I'm not going to follow that thought path. And I say that, but I recognize it is very difficult to do. It is. That's interesting. <laughs> but it is something you can practice. And I do think that it becomes easier over time. And you may find your own unique way of doing it, right? Like you might, it might be helpful to have this image of a basket with things inside that you can put in and take out. Or you might find a different way. Maybe there's certain truths, right? If you find that you struggle with anxious thoughts that are about a particular topic or the root is, is founded in some type of lie that you've been believing, perhaps something that someone spoke over you, maybe when you were a child, then have kind of handy God's truths, the truths about who you are that you can 
repeat. That is something that's a practical tool that God has specifically told me to do that when I am feeling fearful in any way, right? Fear takes all forms. Worry is certainly a form of fear, but he's told me a way that I can combat that is to speak his truths and and to speak them aloud, honestly. Like, yes, it's very helpful to say them in your mind, but there's something about speaking them aloud that's even more impactful. So things like, I am enough, I am safe, I am free, I am loved, I am chosen, all of those things that you can say, even if you're saying like, hey, I'm I'm feeling anxious about my job or this friend situation. Like it, it doesn't even need to be a fear that is directly related to one of those truths, but just speaking God's truths about who you are, especially those I am statements. Those are something that God has specifically shared with me because he is I am. He is the great I am. And so every time we say I am and we speak a truth, we are aligning ourselves to him. There's a, I forget what the verse is, but it says, you know, do not take the Lord's name in vain. And there is a a book by Stephen Furtick. It's called Unqualified. And there's one part in it that just stood out to me so much where he was talking about, you know, we say, oh, don't take the Lord's name in vain. And often we'll, we'll refer to that as don't curse, whatever. But he was describing it as when you say I am and you speak, an, uh, frankly, a lie, something that is less than his truth, you're taking the Lord's name in vain. So if you say something like, I am unworthy, I am stupid, I am not, you know, I am, I am ugly, those things, those are using the Lord's name in vain. When I read that, it, it impacted me. I never thought about that verse in that way. And I never thought about that truth, right? He is, I am, God is, I am. And, and we are one with God. So when we say I am, we are aligning ourselves with him. So align ourselves with his truths, right? I am created on purpose. I am loved infinitely. So that is a practical thing that God has showed me that when I find myself, whether it's having anxious thoughts or just feeling worry or fearful about any particular situation, that a way that I can stand against that fear is to speak his truths and to speak them as those I am truths to align myself with him and to speak them aloud. So that's something that you can try as well. So to have kind of in your tool belt, so to speak, that when you find yourself in that situation where you're having these anxious thoughts, right? Maybe you're struggling to fall asleep. Um, that happens to me a lot where my mind is, is running through all the things. And, you know, I found that my mind when I'm having a lot of anxious thoughts, and when I say anxious thoughts, like even just my mind won't stop, right? It's not even that they're fearful thoughts themselves. It's just my mind won't stop running perhaps about a particular situation. And I'm just thinking about all the different things, whether it's replaying something that occurred or um, thinking about potential possibilities, outcomes, whatever. I've learned that when my mind won't seem to calm down, especially when I'm trying to fall asleep, oftentimes it's a way that my mind is trying to get my attention to say there's something wrong. Just like pain can be a way that your body is trying to get your attention to say that there's something wrong. And I'm learning now that if that's happening, especially when there doesn't seem to be a clear focus, like it's one thing when it's okay, I have a job interview tomorrow and I'm feeling anxious or nervous about that job interview. Like that's something specific. But when my mind just seems to be running over anything random and won't calm down when I'm tired, there should be an ability for me to fall asleep. It's a cue to me that maybe there's something going on under the surface that I'm not recognizing. And this is a way that my mind is kind of making noise to bring it to my attention. And so when that happens then I want to take time to, to be still, to get quiet, to find a way to kind of tune in to perhaps what is under the surface. And I think there are different ways that you can do that. For me, journaling is very helpful. So doing something like free writing, certainly the two-way journaling that I I talk about, you know, you can go back to a prior episode to, to hear about how I do that. But the free writing aspect is also just like having a conversation with really a part of yourself. I, I've learned about, um, internal family systems as a 
therapy approach, psychology therapy approach. And the idea is that we have these different parts in us. So I do view, even outside of that approach of just who we are as, as human beings, we have mind, body, and, and spirit. And even our mind can be further kind of delineated into mind, heart, and soul. And so sometimes I'll do free writing where I'm, I'm trying to basically have a conversation with my mind, with my heart. And it's just a tool a method of getting to kind of what's more under the surface, what's perhaps going on in my subconscious that my conscious mind is struggling to process in a healthy way. And so taking that time for stillness, maybe just doing some free writing of whatever thoughts are flowing, it'll help uncover that. And sometimes it's just going to uncover lies that you're believing, right? And when you can kind of get it out and see it on paper, it allows you that time to then, right, test them against reason and then test them against God's power. So that's something that you could try as well. So then he says, no matter what comes against you, you will prosper in my name. Be strong and courageous. And it makes me think about when God is speaking to Joshua and he's about to kind of go into the promised land. And there's that verse where he says, be strong and courageous. And I think about how many, how many times in the Bible does God tell his people, do not be afraid because it's something we struggle with so much. And it's something that we actually have an ability to, to take action against, right? If, if we didn't have the ability to stop being afraid, he wouldn't tell us, do not be afraid. And then be strong and courageous, right? Sometimes even just going through a single day, right? Depending on what season you're in, you might be just facing something very difficult and just facing another day could require a lot of courage. But he says, be strong and courageous. And we can do that through him. And that might be something that you need to, you need to care for yourself and, and have that intentional, like, okay, I, I'm going to take my fearful thoughts in check and then I'm going to be courageous and I'm going to be strong in standing against those fearful thoughts. I'm gonna be courageous to maybe do that free riding to see what's underneath. Maybe there's some things that have been swept under the rug or tucked away because you haven't want to deal with them. And maybe it's, it's time. Maybe they're starting to have enough of an impact on your life that it's time to go into that difficult space. Have that, maybe have that hard conversation with someone that there's been difficulty with. Maybe you need to be strong and courageous to speak your truth to you. And, and, do it in a kind way, but sometimes that can be what we're anxious about is because we have situations that are unresolved and we haven't been willing to step into that discomfort of conflict, right? Of disagreeing with someone. So I think lastly, I just, this part where he says, receive and be joyful, share my joy and gladness with all you meet. Do not hold back. Do not be afraid to live with joy in your heart and love on your lips. This way is better. My way is better. There's a better way to live. There's a better way to do this life that we can, we can live with love and joy and that those be what is filling us each day, what's driving us forward, what is the backdrop to our thoughts, right? If you imagine that basket of your thoughts, choose to put joy in and take fear out. And that is something that is possible and can get easier with practice. So I just encourage you to maybe maybe just spend some time thinking about some ways that there could be a way that I haven't even brought up that works well for you to be able to take this kind of proactive approach to what thoughts are are allowed in your mind, what thoughts have space and are taking energy. So I just encourage you, if you struggle at all with this like I do, be strong, be courageous, test those fearful thoughts against truth, against God's truth for you and in you. And you will see that his truth will stand above everything. Thanks for tuning in to the Sincerely God podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe and share with your friends. If you'd like more information, you can go to my website, sincerelygod.com. 
There you'll find links to my social media, as well as an ability to get your own copy of Sincerely God, a collection of quotes, either the book or the prayer journal. Until next time, keep listening to how God is speaking to you. It's all inside you, waiting to be.